Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica, and today, as you've probably seen by the title, we are going to be discussing maskne. And basically, this is something that was even very new for me. As an acne sufferer and somebody who does have combination skin, I was already experiencing breakouts here and there from my hormones, whether it be my period or just stress in general. But then when we added the extra element of having to wear masks daily, definitely added a new layer of je ne sais quoi that acne sufferers like myself have to now deal with. So in this video, I wanted to sort of outline some of the things that have been really helping myself and hopefully you guys can get some tips and tricks that help either prevent or treat your acne. So if you aren't already completely sure what acne is, it's basically the friction, the rubbing, the sort of occlusive barrier that's trapping in any heat or moisture onto the skin. And basically when you trap heat and moisture and then you rub against it, it causes a lot of irritation, inflammation, and that can even lead to this form of maskne that develops in areas that you may never have experienced acne before or if you are an acne sufferer, it's just gotten worse. So here I have two masks that I really adore. This one is a cotton one, and this one is actually a silk mask. And besides looking extremely luxurious, it is such a soft material to put up against your skin, and it just protects your skin and really saves your skin from breakout. I've noticed a difference while wearing this silk mask in particular because it helps reduce the friction and also it's a very breathable material and it's just super luxurious and very gentle against the skin. This one is actually from Lily Silk and they happen to be the sponsor of today's video and I am just so grateful that they were able to send me this because my skin was seriously struggling and I feel like having silk materials in your skincare routine are super important and that also leads me to another one of their very famous and well-known products and that is their silk pillowcase and this is just a work of art honestly I feel so luxurious one using a silk pillowcase and two being able to know that my skin is protected against such a gentle and sort of forgiving material. So if I'm rubbing my face up against it in the long run, it does help prevent any wrinkles and also it helps reduce irritation against the skin. So because it is such a gentle material, when you're rubbing your face up against it, you don't have to worry about further irritating your acne because it's been in a mask all day. So that that's why I, was so grateful that they sent it to me and I've been using silk in general for years now and Lily Silk exclusively for some time and I just can't get enough of it. It's so beautiful. I even got one for my boyfriend too and he absolutely loves it. So it is a thing for anybody, boys, girls, women, men. Like it is such a beautiful product. They even offer monogramming. So mine actually has my initials on it, E back. And it's just so soft. The white, the, the like, I think it's an ivory color or just simple white. I'll double check that and like link it in the description, but it is absolutely so beautiful. Another thing that is super great about Silk is as we are going to discuss, when you are layering any of your skincare products at night or you are putting on a thick protective barrier for your skin to heal and repair, this material ensures that it won't absorb all of your skincare products. Silk really helps to keep whatever is on your face on your face, which is really nice because you don't want to waste all the money that you're spending on your skincare products and you also want to ensure that your skin is keeping in all the moisture and products on your skin rather than on your pillow. I'm gonna try and do this very chronologically and sort of as you're going through your day, what you need to be doing. So when you do wake up in the morning, I have been finding that cleansing in the morning has been helping tremendously. I want to make sure that my area is as clean and dry and well moisturized as possible before I put on my mask. So I usually go in with a first step and recently I've been super, super enjoying very milky cleansers. So not foaming cleansers, nothing that bubbles, but very milky and sort of soothing 
cleansers in the morning. So a few I have here is Glossier's Milky Jelly Cleanser. I recently got back into this and I'm absolutely obsessed. The classic that I hear a lot of other skinfluencers and people in general on social media and even dermatologists talk about is the Vanny Cream Gentle Facial Cleanser. Again, another very milky texture. And if you are a skincare lover, I'm sure you've seen all over TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, CeraVe's Hydrating Cleanser, which is another golden standard sort of cleanser in my books. So these three are definitely super gentle in the morning and they just cleanse off your skin so that you're ready to go in and really moisturize it before mask wearing. Something that I really did notice was that there was a lot of dryness under my mask. And one of the easiest ways to combat that is basically right after you've cleansed your skin. That means right as your skin is still damp and you haven't completely dried it off, you need to go in with a moisturizer. So a moisturizer that I tried and true super adore is the one from CeraVe. This is the moisturizing lotion for normal to dry skin. I really do like this moisturizer. Another one that I've been implementing recently that truly does help is the Neutrogena Hydra Boost um, Gel Cream. And this is for extra dry. So basically this is a gel texture, which I find with my combination oily skin is really nice during the day because it helps combat the oiliness, but still gives me all the moisture and hydration that I need. It has um, hyaluronic acid in it, which is super great at really keeping the moisture in your skin and not letting it escape. And that is when you would go on top with a more occlusive barrier. So I like to use a barrier cream itself. I have two. Okay, here's my other one. I found this. So I have the La Roche-Posay one, the Cicaplast Balm B5. This is a cream I like to put over the area wherever my mask will be touching. And another one that is really nice is the uh, Restorative Protective Cream from um, Eau Thermal Aven, Avine, Avini. I don't know, I think it's French, it's Eau Thermal, but uh, it is from Paris. So it's just another great barrier cream. So when I'm feeling extra dry that day, sometimes I will go in with this before I do my sunscreen, but other days the having just a really good uh, moisturizing barrier really, really helps. And then as my last step in the morning, cleanse, moisturize, what's the last one? SPF for sure. So I usually like to go in with a mineral sunscreen and this one is a Comfy Water Sunblock from Purito. I've talked about them countlessly. I really do adore this sunblock. Doesn't have too much of a white cast. Again, though, I'm very pale, can't speak for darker skin tones, but it does really get into the skin very nicely like blend and work into the skin so I really do love it it is non comedogenic not sticky uh, no white cast it has dermal relief components and non nano sunblock so super awesome it's an SPF 50 very high very good under a mask especially because a lot of the masks that I know I've been wearing don't actually have um, any UV blocking properties so that way I know that I'm protected even underneath my mask if I am walking from outside to inside I will be taking off my mask when I go outside so at least that way I know that my skin's protected underneath the mask. Another one that I really like is from Skin Skinceuticals and this one is actually a tinted sunblock which is really nice because that goes into my next point of not wearing any makeup. So whenever I'm going to be wearing a mask outside I like to do my routine very simply. Again what is it? Cleanse, moisturize, sunscreen and here it gives you a little bit of color to cover up any of the redness that you might be experiencing from having these breakouts. A lot of the times I am wearing makeup now, but when I will be wearing a mask, I do not wear makeup other than maybe a mascara and like an eye color. And then I go straight in with a tinted sunblock if I know that I'm gonna be taking off my mask throughout the day. And I even bring this with me in case I wanna touch up some areas to sort of just reduce the redness on my face because I feel like that is how I see irritation a lot of the time under my mask whether it be a breakout, there's also followed by a lot of redness when I take off my mask. So as far as treating your masks, once you have worn your mask throughout the day, if it does have any of your tinted sunscreen on it, or if you did end up caving and wearing that little bit of concealer or foundation, it is so, so, so important to wash these properly. Again, I use two different masks and I have a few versions of these. I have a few silk ones and a few cotton ones and I like to wash them every single day. I'll take a bowl and fill it up with some hot water 
Again, you want to be careful with the temperature because you want it hot enough to help kill any bacteria, but not too hot, hot to risk any of your materials. So make sure that you're reading the labels. So you can wash the silk and the mask in 30 degrees Celsius water. So basically you take your tap water and you put it on the hottest possible temperature. And then after you've filled up your bowl of water, I put in a little gentle detergent. So that means no colorants, no fragrance, very like baby safe. Like a lot of them are labeled baby safe detergent or hypoallergenic detergent. And I make sure I really scrub them and get in there and get off any of the makeup or debris or sunscreen that I have on my mask, this has made all the difference. When I wash my mask daily, I totally notice my irritation go down and also my breakouts because you are killing any of the bacteria that's being harbored on these masks. You are in essence preventing any breakouts or further irritation for the next day. Now, as far as evening skincare goes, I usually keep it again, very, very, very simple. I do a double cleanse in the evening. So I either use a cleansing balm to remove any of my makeup. I really like the uh, Clean It Zero from Vanilla & Co. It's either the pink one or the purple one I've tried I like them both equally and then after I've cleansed off all my makeup which usually is just my eye makeup and then whatever sunscreen or tiny bit of concealer I'm wearing anywhere on my face I will go in with a cleanse again whether it be Vanny cream Glossier or CeraVe again these are all ones that I highly recommend they're very gentle to the skin yet effective and once my skin has been properly cleansed that is when I go in with good moisturization. So a product that I've been recently really enjoying is the hyaluronic acid and B5 complex. So basically this really helps with uh, hydration. So it's a hydration support uh, formula. This one is from The Ordinary. I've tried the one from SkinCeuticals also, the B5 serum. If you have the money to spend it, that one is great. I believe this one is under $10. So again, if you're on a budget, highly recommend this one. Also very much like it. So I go in with that serum and then I do my spot treatment and I have noticed that my skin has really desperately needed to be spot treated and dried out because the acne is so sporadic and also because I am an acne sufferer outside of mask wearing. So I have prescribed to me Benzaclin. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before on my channel, but I've used it on and off for years now when I had really bad acne in university. I really enjoyed using it because it has a mix of clindamycin and also benzoyl peroxide. They are the perfect percentages for me. Again, the, this was prescribed to me. Um, a lot of over-the-counter spot treatments don't work for me. This is just like a true, known, proven spot treatment for me. So I just gravitate towards it. I put it on whatever spots I have. I had a pimple on here on my lip and a few on my chin. The cheek ones are just scars now and like pigmentation that I need to deal with. But this is truly a ride or die spot treatment for me. I really, really like it. Again, talk to your healthcare providers and see what's best for you. And then I like to top it off with a super, super rich cream because I do want to really keep in all the hydration. You can go in with a Neutrogena one again, really do like it. It's gel, but it's very hydrating. Another one that I've been recently really enjoying is the Glossier Priming Moisturizing Rich Cream. It is their thicker one. I know they have one that's like for oily skin that's more oil controlling, but this one at, at night, I just absolutely adore it. It's very, very calming and also occlusive, so it really keeps in the moisture. And then I usually like to top it off with some sort of barrier cream. I mentioned this earlier in the video, but the Cicaplast Balm B5, Chef's Kiss, absolutely love it. It's great just to repair any broken skin, any irritations, and having that as a final layer ensures to keep everything really retained and moisturized. So I hope you learned something from this video, and if you did, hit the thumbs up button. I'll see you all in the next one.